us unto the Lord. We will exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. We're going to now have a hymnal of praise by our choir. First, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit to come in, your spirit, Father, right now to come in and dwell with us. We ask that you come in and allow your Shekinah glory to fall afresh. We want a new, a fresh, God. We want a new anointing on this morning, God. We ask that you come in and sup with us just for a little while. Do what you want to do. Have your way. Speak, Holy Spirit, in this house on today. We ask that as the, as the people, the congregation, enter into those doors, God, prepare their hearts, God, for a word on today. We ask that, that as you prepare them to receive, God, what thus saith the Lord. God, I ask that this congregation will begin to worship you in spirit and in truth. I ask that they will magnify your name on this morning, God, because you are good alone, God, because you have kept us all week long. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We will now have the hymnal of praise. Page 
so blessed. Oh, see what God has. You are too kind. Count your blessings. Name him one more. Ooh, count your many blessings. See what God has. Giving you not just on today, but all week long, all year long. How about we're in a new month? He's blessing you. He's blessing you right now. You might not be able to see, but he's blessing you right now. You woke up this morning, so he blessed you already. That was the first thing he did. It wasn't the alarm clock that woke you up. We know we set our times back, but God is still moving forward. He still blessed his people on this morning. He woke you up clothed in your right mind. So we ought to bless his name. We ought to worship him. We ought to magnify him just because of who he is. Because there's a blessing to count on this morning. Name them one by one. I got too many. I can't name them all. But I count my blessings right now. Right now I count them and I say thank you Lord for blessing me on this day. God be the glory. Amen. We are now going to have our responsive reading by our deaconess Vicki Davis. Following that, we're going to have prayer by deaconess Nacine Hyde. Good morning, New Bethel. To God be the glory for all the great things that he has done. Our scripture reading this morning will be coming from Obadiah, first chapter, 3 to 7, and verses 10 through 18. I will read the light, and you will read the bold. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rocks and make your home on the heights, you who say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? Though your Though you soar like the eagle and make your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. But how Esau will be ransacked, his hidden treasures pillaged. All your allies will force you to the border. Your friends will deceive and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. You should not gloat over your brother in the day of his misfortune, nor rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor boast so much in the day of their trouble. You should not march through the gates of my people in the day of their disaster, nor gloat over them in their calamity in the day of their disaster, nor seize their wealth in the day of their disaster. Just as you drank on my holy hill, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and drink and be as if they had never been. But on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy, and Jacob will possess his inheritance. All together, Jacob will be a fire and Joseph a flame. Esau will be stubble, and they will set him on fire and destroy him. There will be no survivors from Esau. The Lord has spoken. Blessed be the name of the Lord for his most precious words.
Good morning. Good morning. Let every heart pray. Thank you. Our Father, our Thank God, our the Creator, our Master, our Savior, our everything. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God. It wasn't promised to us, but here we are. And we are so thankful to be here in this house of worship one more time. Thank you, God, that we were able to come out and to mingle our voices together and to praise you. For that is the reason, God, that we came. We came for no other reason, God, but to praise you and to give you all the honor and the glory that we are able to do. Lord, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for all of the family members that are represented here. We thank you for our pastor and our first lady. We ask your blessings upon all of us, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you how you took us through the whole week, God. You blessed us and you took care of us. You kept us from being in a car accident, God. You kept sickness from coming over our bodies, God. You put food on the table, Lord. You paid the bills, God. Lord, you kept a roof over our head, Lord. Even last night when it turned cold, God, we had heat to warm our bodies, God. Oh, Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you this morning because you are so good. It was you that done those things, God, not us. It was you, God. Lord, we just thank you this morning. We thank you, God, for the service so far. We thank you, God, for the Sunday school this morning. We thank you for the word that is going to come forth this morning, God. May it bless our souls. May we listen, God. May we hear. May we be doers of that word when we leave this place. It is so easy to sit here and to worship God and to be in the house of the Lord and to rejoice. But when we leave this place, God, what will we do, God? What will we do, God? Will we continue to worship you and to give you the praise, God, and to live every day for you? Oh, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. You're so good. Thank you for your son's blood this morning, God. Thank you how you shed that blood for us that we may have everlasting life. All we have to do is believe to accept him into our heart and to live for him every day. Oh, my God, I just thank you. I thank you, God. Bless the bereaved families everywhere, God. Bless those that would like to be into the house of the Lord this morning, but they cannot, God. Lord, even bless those that don't want to be here. Give them a desire down in their heart that they may want to be here, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. And we praise your name this morning because you are worthy. But that reason only we should praise you because you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. And we praise you, God. We praise you, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
the scripture, the responsive reading, and the prayer on this morning. We're now going to have a psalm of praise by our choir. But as the worshipers come in, we ask that you just tighten up a little bit. If you can move to the my left this way so that everybody coming in can get in. Amen? Amen. 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 And I just wanted to say on this morning that it's all right to praise the Lord. Amen. It's all right to worship him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right to wave your hand in the air. If you can't say a word, just right. wave your hand in the, in the air. Right. But anything, whatever you do, I just ask that you don't be quiet. I ask that you just don't sit there and don't say nothing. I ask that you make some kind of noise because even a baby can cry out when they need something. They cry for milk. They make a different cry than when they need to be changed. They make a different cry when they're sleepy. So even they know how to cry out and say something when they need something. And I want to say that whatever you need from God, you can get it here on today. What's your wants? What is your needs? What is your desires? You can get it right here in God's house on today. Anything that you have, have a heart of expectancy on today. What are you expecting and believing God to do for you on today? Amen. Amen.
for? How many want to be fed? We want God to fill us up. Fill our cups, Lord, until we want no more. Amen? Amen. Let's get the choir a hand clap on this morning. They're singing all right. Aren't they singing all right this morning? Yes, they are. To God be the glory. Well, right now we're going to move along on in our service, and we're going to have our meet and greet right now. So we ask that you all stand and we just move around and just greet everyone, visitors, members, whoever you are, let's greet everyone with the love of God, a handshake, a hug, whatever God lays on your heart to do. Thank you all for your cooperation on this morning. I really felt the love as we all moved around. You have to remember that we are the body of Christ. And we should always greet one another, show some love to one another in God's house, in and out of God's house. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're now going to move along with our service, and we're going to ask that 
The choir will give us another selection. And following that, following that is the word. We're going to hear from heaven on this morning. Amen? Amen. We're going to have our own, this, this shepherd, the shepherd of this house, our own Pastor Bell to come. So that'll be the next voice that you hear following the choir. Amen. Amen.
and stand to your feet if God has done anything for you. If you say, I can't forget on this day what you did for me, what you did way back on Calvary. God, you did it. You did it, God. You did it. You did it.
If he's been good to anybody, I wish you'd stand with me and say, he's been so good. I don't deserve it, but you've been so good. God, we thank you and we honor you for making yourself known in this house on today. We thank you for the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for coming into this house and resting on us and loving on us and filling us with your unconditional love. And now I pray again that I might be lost totally in your will. Hide me behind the cross, oh God. I surrender my will. I surrender these words that have been written on paper to you, God. And I pray that you will make some sense of your word. Now humble me down to absolutely nothing. So that you might become all. So that you can get the glory. Mine, 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 mine. Mine, mine, mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Mm. Praise is who I am. While I got the chance, I'm going to bless you. Mm. All times. Mm. I purpose in my heart to praise you, God. Through the good and the bad. Through the good and the bad. I'll praise I'm determined to praise you, God. Regardless of the circumstance. I'll praise you. Mm. In all that I go Somebody said, praise is what I do. Thank you, God. Oh, God, we bless you, God. We thank you, God. We shall bark you. We lift up the name of Jesus. No other name till a man be saved but by the name of Jesus. And that's why we praise you. That's who we are. Mm. It's what I do. Come on, let's sing it with the choir. Say praise. Praise is what I do. It's what I do. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Will y'all put your hands together for this fine choir of Ethel Wilson. Amen. Thank you for blessing us in spirit and in truth and in song. What's this, Pat Glenn? Raise your hand, Miss Pat. Didn't I see you? Raise your hand. And they did without Miss Pat. Give her a hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. She's been a little under doctor's care, but she's continued to press her way. We're still praying for you, uh, Sister Glenn, and all of those that are sick and shut in. Uh, Mother Young showed up in the name of Jesus on there. Just raise your hand again. Amen. I tell you, she said, if I could just get out of this hospital, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. God bless you, Deacon Howard. 
bless you. Uh, Brother uh, Sultan Pearsall, he was yeah. laying on the operating table a couple of weeks ago, but he's standing up in the name of Jesus on today. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he's done. He is a healer. Y'all do know he is a healer. He's just a healer. He's, 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 he's just a healer in spite of us, and I'm excited about that. Um, Tyrone, before I knew you, man, I knew your daddy. You know, when I was, uh, went through training at, at Salemburg, uh, North Carolina, for uh, the work with the Department of Corrections, your daddy was one of my trainers. Yeah, I want to Mr. Royal, just stand up. That's, that's our keyboard player daddy on today. God bless you. I looked at him. I said, I know you. He said, yeah. He trained me. He had a little bit more hair then. And, <laughs> And I had more black hair than him, but, but we're here. Amen. And, I, and, and we're delighted that you show, chose to worship with us on today. We thank God for each and every one of you, all of our visitors. Our announcement secretary will uh, give you the opportunity to make yourself known uh, at the end of the service. Amen. Amen. We've been dealing with the book of, of prophets over the course of the past few weeks. The Mount of Prophets. And on today, we land in the book of of Obadiah, um, Obadiah is, is actually the shortest book of the Old Testament, uh, comprised of one chapter, uh, 23, 25 verses, about 670 words. It's just that short, but a powerful book of the Bible, and Ob Obadiah had something to say. We started out with the book of of Hosea about three weeks ago, and Hosea was, uh, you, I, li I like to give you just a little bit of, 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 of going back uh, so that you just don't get a good feeling, but we have some recall of what God has done in the past, because you know, if he did it before, he'll, do it again. yeah, so we don't want to continue to make the same mistakes. So uh, we can go by notes. Remember Hosea? Remember Hosea? The first thing God told Hosea to do was to do what? Marry go out and get you a woman of the night. I'm trying to keep it clean. Go out and get your prostitute. Go out and get you someone. And I'm telling you, before you go and get her, she's going to cheat on you. And she's going to have uh, children by other men. But I want you to go out and get her. And, and, and marry her, make her your bride, because what I want to do is to use this relationship with you and Gomer and, so that Israel can see how they did me, how they cheated on me. And in spite of me pouring out all of my heart and all of my love, I want to show you what they did to me. And at the end of the day, you know, God got upset and he's like, I'm through with you. You know, you are not mine. You know, just leave me alone. Get away from me. And at the end of the day, he said, I can't let you go. <laughs> See, that's why I love him, you know, you know, because in all of my inconsistencies and, and in my unfaithfulness and, and in, my, uh, in my ways, uh, he still loves me because he's committed in spite of me. Next week, we went to the book of Joel. Joel is where we observed the day of the Lord. It started out a really bad day, and there were the chewing locusts, the consuming locusts. There was the swarming locusts and the crawling locusts, and all of these locusts, they just consumed the land of Israel. Uh, and this is the same old story. It, it was because of disobedience, and so God allowed the locusts to come. Uh, theologians say uh, the locusts actually represented uh, other armies and nations that came and defeated them, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, and uh, perhaps the Philistines and all of those. Uh, but uh, the bottom line is, is because of their unfaithfulness, God, there was trouble in the land, and it was called the day of the Lord. It was a day of doom and gloom, uh, but in spite of this, at the end of the day, it, it talks about the sun was dark and the moon was red like blood, uh, and he said a day was going to come, though, in spite of their unfaithfulness, a day came that whosoever called on the name of the Lord was going to be saved. Amen. And at the end of the day, he showed them love and kindness again. Amen. Over and over and over again, someone sang the song, he's blessing me. Over and over again. Then we came to Amos. Uh, Amos, he was a prophet as well, of course. Uh, he was a sheep breeder. Uh, he was called to prophesy against Israel in the southern kingdom of Judah because, remember, the kingdoms had been split. Uh, remember, it was Solomon that allowed some uh, 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 ungodliness. He had to have all of those wives 
and they brought some of their rituals and idols. And so anyway, that caused the kingdom to be split. There was the northern and the southern. Uh, long story short, he was a sheep breeder. He prophesied against the whole nation of Israel and Judah. Uh, and God was real upset. He said, look, don't even sing to me. <laughs> You know, don't, I don't want to hear no praise songs. I don't want to hear nothing. I'm done with you. And then he went farther. He says, look, uh, 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 you know, you think you fasted. I'm, I'm about to put you on a word, as y'all remember that? <laughs> Listen, in other words, he was saying, I, I ain't got nothing. I said, I ain't. Y'all forgive me. I just wanted to get a, make a point. He said, I ain't got nothing to say to you. <laughs> Could you imagine Shirley God said, look, <laughs> talk to the hand. Amen. <laughs> Could you imagine that God becomes so through Deacon Young with us that he says, I'm done. Well, and then, you know, I thank God that his mercies, uh, Brother Royal, are new every morning because still at the end of the day, he is so committed, faithful, so committed. I mean, God, we mess up some, well, I do. Maybe, it should, maybe it's just me. You know, I may not do a lot of stuff, but sometimes I got stinking thinking. Well, amen. 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 And I knew disciples class on today. Uh, we were reminded that Jesus said, uh, you look, you know, your sins are not just in the things that you do, but it's the stuff in your mind. Amen. Because the mind is the blueprint of what you're going to do. Well, you know, Jesus said, in other words, it's not. Uh, uh, so bad that you laid down with someone that's not your spouse, but you did it in your mind. Well, well, you did it wrong. Because this where Satan uh, helps us develop the blueprint to, to go astray from the love and the will of God. So we dealt with that. And, uh, and y'all and the deaconess gave me off on last week. But all we know is... <laughs> hey, come on now. You know, y'all, y'all do your homework. All we know is what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was good, too. And Mary Cook this past week. <laughs> Y'all clap for your pastor. She cooks. I got a great wife. She's good. She's good. She's good. Here we go. On today, we're going to deal with... Um, I want to deal with Obadiah. I already told you, Steve. Uh, there's only a few books in the Bible that's shorter in the book of uh, Obadiah, the book of uh, Third John, the book of Second John, not the gospel. Third John, Second John, uh, Jude, and uh, Philemon. Those are the only books that's shorter than the book of Obadiah. But Obadiah is the shortest book in the whole Bible. You can, you can, you can, you can uh, read the book of Obadiah uh, probably uh, in about five or six minutes, and you can say, I, I, "I've read a book of the Bible until then." And then you can go back and say, "God, now what are you saying to me?" Because God wants to say something, I believe, into each life today that's powerful. It was powerful to me. And, and I pray that you uh, hear his voice and not my own. I have a subtopic, uh, and it's on your bulletin, as uh, my brother's keeper. You know, what's so amazing, you know, the other uh, minor prophets that we discussed, it was concerning uh, the unfaithfulness of Israel, the children of Israel, the unfaithfulness of Judah, and God continued basically to tell them, you know, I'm done with you, I'm through with you. But on today, he's not saying anything to Israel or Judah. He's speaking to Israel's brother. Esau, Edom, the nation of Edom. And God has a problem with Edom uh, because uh, his children, the children of Israel, uh, Jacob, remember Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Uh, the Babylonians came through. They feel it was somewhere about 565 B.C. Anyway, uh, the Babylonians came through and uh, literally destroyed them. Listen, and Edom had a front row seat and did nothing. Amen. And let me just say this real quick. And this is what God is saying. He said, I'm going to get you. Because <laughs> you sat there, you sat there, 
and you watched them take your brother down through there, and you did absolutely. Now let's go way back. Because it's, it's been a family feud ever since they came out of their mother's womb. Rebecca, remember? Isaac was the husband. Rebecca was uh, the wife. And, and uh, Rebecca, a womb was shut up, and her husband prayed for her. How many of your husbands prayed for your wife on this week? I want to see your hand if you prayed for your wife. Why don't you get in the habit of praying for your wife? Isaac prays for his wife, Rebecca, that her womb might be opened up so that she can conceive. And boy, did she conceive. She conceived, and there was a war going on in her stomach, in her womb. And she inquired of the Lord and said, what is going on in my womb? And the Lord said, there's two nations in you. And the younger is going to serve the elder. And they were fighting even before they came out of the womb. And the day came when they were birthed. The first one out, the eldest one, was Esau, and, and he's hairy and he's red. And as he's coming out from the, to, uh, from the womb, his brother Jacob is holding him by the heel. Oh I assume that he's fighting because he want to get his birthright. Amen. <laughs> you know how the story goes. Rebecca was like really crazy over Jacob. He's kind of like a home economics guy. You know, he can cook, he can sew. Uh, you know, decorate. He's, he's you know, he, he's kind of like a mama's boy. And that's cool. That's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But Esau, he's a hunter. He's a warrior. You know, he can, man, he could, he could take down a venison or a deer from a thousand yards away. You know, he's a marksman. You know, you, come on now, you daddies. You know y'all want a big rugged football player. You want a, a LeBron James. You know, you don't want, you know, somebody that, that can just sing unless they're going to make some money at it. Well. <laughs> you know, you want a man because so it make you look good. Well, uh, Isaac loves Esau. And on this particular day, Esau, he goes out. I'm just bringing up the date because they're, look, they are brothers. They came, listen, they came out of the very same womb. Well. On one particular day, uh, Esau goes uh, hunting, he's come back, and he's famished. He is hungry, he's tired, and he says to uh, his brother Jacob, who just finished cooking, well. let me get some of that stew, well. that lentil, mm -hmm. that, that what you got. Let me get some of that. Wow. And Jacob had him right where he wanted him at. <laughs> he said, you can get some, but let me get that birthright. Well. <laughs> Because the birthright, uh, which the birthright uh, was legally belonged to the eldest son, which meant that once at the death of the father, he got twice as much as everyone else. Uh, Jacob says, yes, you can get some of this stew, but it's going to cost you. And he says, what good is his birthright? I don't want it. Just give me the stew right now. I got to have it right now. Now, did y'all hear that? Amen. Somebody got to have it well, right now. Right See, you have a right to eternal life. You have a right to stand on the promises of God. You, you, since now that we've been born again, we have a right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the stuff that you got to have right now, it'll follow. Some of us put the cart before the horse. Esau said, I gotta have it right now. Take the birthright. It's yours. Take it. And he despised his birthright. Daddy is about to die. Daddy Isaac, he's about to die. Rebecca knows about this. Rebecca, the wife of Isaac, knows about this. He said, yo, 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 Jacob, come here. Look, your dad is about to die. Now, you know, he's supposed to bless, actually, the eldest son. But what we're going to do is we're going to trick your dad and my husband. We're going to fool him. And we're going to make him think that you are Esau in order that you can not only have just the birthright, but the blessing as well. So you know how it goes. You know, they clothed him up and went him in there and said, Les, you know, uh, he asked, you know, lay my hands on you. You don't look like Jacob. You don't smell, excuse me, Esau. You don't smell like him. No, you know, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. And he lay hands on him. 
and he speaks a blessing over his life. Well, the father speaks a blessing over his life. Esau comes in and is trying to get the blessing before uh, his father dies. And he's like, who are you? I thought I just blessed you. And it's like, no, it wasn't me. They come to find out it was Jacob. He's been deceived. But what, I, what God wants us to see, the power of, of words from our Father from on high. Amen. Listen, if God said you're blessed, you're blessed. Amen. and there's nothing nobody can do about it, it's up to us to begin to live like we're blessed. It's up to us to begin to walk into our blessings. Regardless of what I feel like, regardless of how they treat me, regardless of whether they let me wear a, 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 a clergy collar or, or, or a deacon tie, listen, I'm blessed. Amen. You got to believe that. Amen. It's not what you got on. It's not the title you have. It's not what you're driving, how you're living. But if God says you blessed, I decree and declare that you are blessed. If God said that if you, would, if you will wait on me, I will send you a godly husband. If you will wait on the Lord. <laughs> or whatever it is that, that you're waiting for, a godly wife. If you will wait on the Lord instead of I got to have it. <laughs> Look. I ain't mad at nobody. But look, you don't have to play the number. You don't have to scratch it off. If you would just wait. Let's fast forward. He has the birthright. He got the blessing. Because what I think what Esau felt was, you know, he can have the birthright. Because I'm going to get the blessing anyway. At the end of the day, he lost everything. And he purposed in his heart, I'm going to kill you, Jacob. <laughs> Got my stuff. Actually, he, he surrendered his stuff. And Jacob is on the run. Fast forward about 20, 20-some 20 years, uh, they made up. Did you know, you know, I researched the Hatfields and the McCoys. And yeah, I go deep because I want y'all to understand this thing. <laughs> I thought it was just a made-up story, but it was a real-life incident. Yeah. The McCoys were from Kentucky. The Hatfields were from West Virginia. There was a small piece of land or something between them. And uh, both of them fought in the Confederacy Army uh, against the Union Army. But a McCoy came home one day, and he was shot down and killed, and they thought that it was a Hatfield that did it. And for many years, uh, that's where the feud began, the Hatfields and the McCoys. There's a, a Hatfield from this family that lives in Durham, North Carolina, as a matter of fact. But, but do you know, I'm speaking to someone that ain't speaking to somebody in your family. Do you know that the Hatfields and the McCoys reconciled? My God. This goes back to 1765, something like that. Uh, well, that's when they were born. It goes back to the 1800s. But do you know the Hatfields and McCoys, they reconciled, I think it was in 2000, and even the governor of, of Kentucky and the governor of West Virginia, they signed these proclamations. They reconciled their differences. Have you reconciled with... <coughs> with your family member yet? See, the Hatfield and McCoys, it goes back like 300 years. And they reconcile. I hope it ain't going to take 300 years, y'all, because I don't. Because I don't know if some of y'all got that long. <laughs> Is it up to some of your great, 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 great grandchildren to fix it? You see, God, he's a reconciliator. Let's fast forward some more. On this particular day, I'm back in the book of Obadiah. Uh, the Babylonians, they come through. And not only do they begin to kill and to destroy and to take the stuff from the children of Judah and Israel. But Jacob's brother, Israel, Israel's brother Esau, sat there and he did nothing. And he thought that he could get away with doing nothing. Listen. 
they nurse from the very same breast. They played in the same yard together. They went to the same family reunion and sat at the table together. And when his brother needed him most, Pastor Clark, he did absolutely nothing. Turned his back. Look, popped some popcorn and like they were looking at a movie. And they thought they were secure. Here's why. Verse 3 says, the pride of your heart has deceived you. You live in the clefts of the rocks and make your home on the heights. You say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? Oh, you soar like the eagle and make your nest among the stars. From there, I will bring you down, declares the Lord. They, they actually had uh, their, their homes and their residence uh, built high uh, in the clefts and in, clay, in caves that were high. And they felt that the enemy and no one else could get to them. Listen, not even God. <laughs> and they felt safe and secure. But God said, I'm going to handle you. I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to get you because you sat there and you did nothing for your brother. In verse 5, he says, if these came to you, if robbers in the night, oh, what a disaster awaits you, would they not steal only as much as they wanted? If grape pickers came to you, uh, would they not leave a few grapes? Uh, what the enemy didn't get, uh, his brother came by and took that too. Right. Remember the Grinch that stole Christmas? Well, yeah. On the cartoon part, I think uh, a mouse wanted this a little piece of cheese. And the Grinch came in and said, <laughs> made sure they had nothing left. No substance, no life, no love, nothing uh, that would help them get through the day. Wow. Said even if someone came and stole uh, your grapes, uh, I was at Deacon uh, Pierce Hall house last week. You got a grapevine back there. If I would come at nighttime and, and raid your grapevine, I ain't going to take everything. I'm going to leave some on the ground. <laughs> I'm going to leave you some. Edom made sure that his brother had nothing to survive on. This is his brother. They got the same mama. I mean, decades went, but, you know, they're of the same clan. Made sure they had absolutely nothing. Verse 60 says, but how Esau will be ransacked, his hidden treasures pillaged, all your allies will force, will force you to border, to the border. Your friends will deceive and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. Uh, uh, you know, he, in other words, God is saying, look, exactly what you sow, you're going to have to reap that. Now, why you sat by and watched them take advantage of your very own and did nothing, it's going to happen to you. Because of the violence against your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. On the day you stood aloof, thank you, uh, Reverend Young helped me earlier, while strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. You ain't no better than the devil. Well, well, well. <laughs> You're no better than the enemy. Are y'all, let me say it a different way. You knew that all she got was $65 a month for food stamps well. <laughs> with four babies. Well. And you didn't bring a loaf of bread over. <laughs> you saw the tires on her car, Bo. You know she needed some tires on her car. You know she was riding on some Maypox, <laughs> some onions, <laughs> and you did nothing. I'm just using both y'all. I don't know. Don't y'all take it personal, right? But all right. But while y'all giggling, you knew that single daughter was expectancy. And how much Similac did you bring by? Uh -oh. How many cans of Infamil did you? How many pampers did you? 
You should have threw a baby shower. And you did absolutely. Oh, you thought that's what she get for 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 being disobedient and for and for having sex hours. Uh, oh, that's what she get. Oh, that's exactly what she get. But when you was out there, when you was at the club, when you should have got a DUI, when you was in the hotel. Yep. But when you saw your brother's daughter in need, you did absolutely no grace, no mercy. And God said, eat them, I'm going to handle you. You was at the same family reunion, sit on the same pew. I know I'm not talking to you. This is for the internet, people. You sit on the same mm, Bored, <laughs> oh, shit, in the same church, you saw them stockings that was towed up from the floor up, and you talked about your brother. And you knew because her mama told you. And you thought they deserved it. I'm a ha I love you, but I'm going to handle you. At Thanksgiving, your loved one was insulted in her face. Perhaps they talked about him, talked about her behind their back, and you sat there and you got in on it. As a matter of fact, not to say anything was uh, uh, t tells him that you with it. You didn't say that ain't right. You didn't say I ain't got nothing to do with it. You sat there and you listened. You said, mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> that's right. Out of all I've done for you, Edom, well. because even though I didn't give you the birthright or the blessing, I left you some. Amen. I bless you. And you did nothing. Well, well, well. Verse 14 says, you should not wait at the crossroads to cut down their fugitives. They were looking for a refuge. They was looking uh, for someone that they could just uh, confide in, someone that they could uh, pour their heart to. And, and you know what you said? Not y'all. Internet people. <laughs> you know what you said? Eat them. Um, you said, I'm going to pray for you, and you didn't do that. Verse 15, the day of the Lord is near for all nations, as you have done it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own. Just as you drank on my holy hill, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and drink and be as if they had never been. Can I go to my notes? Y'all shared the same mother, but you did nothing for your brother. You were supposed to be your brother's keeper, not based on his unrighteousness, but based on the relationship you had with me. I told you in my word to pray for your enemies. I, I told you in my word to uh, uh, show love and kindness to those that persecute you. I told you, look, you knew her son was incarcerated. Okay, you didn't, you didn't have to go sin, but did you write him? <laughs> did you send him $20? He well, did eight years. Well, well, well. <laughs> <coughs> Am I my brother's keeper? Played in the same yard, but you did nothing. 
ate from the same pot, but you did nothing. No gas money. And you knew they needed to get to work. Well, you knew, and you did nothing. Listen, they called you on your cell phone. He was like, <laughs> I know what she want. You didn't have to give him no money. You could have said, let's pray. Eat them, Esau, eat them, did nothing. I don't know about you, but when I was out there doing my thing, I'm glad somebody did something for me on the cross. When I was out there uh, uh, doing everything that I was big enough and bad enough to do, when I was out there tripping, I'm glad somebody did something for me on Calvary. He didn't have to do it. And now when you see your loved one in need, your blood. I'm almost done. I know y'all don't like me. She got fired and you acted like you didn't even know. You could have at least have come to me, Tracy, and said, Lord, you know, uh, what shall I do? You didn't even talk to me about it. <laughs> Listen, because you thought that she deserved it. You felt that he deserved it. Listen, you pulled a cane. Am I my brother's keeper? I got mine. He got to get her. Same daddy. Sane in the same choir. Saying in the same quad, Nigel. They saw you out there on 40 thumbing. <laughs> well. I just used Nigel. He went on 40 thumbing, but but you know. I already told you how Bo saw that the car was dripping oil and ball tires needed a jump start, and Bo went down to Burger King and got him something to eat. <laughs> Bo know that won't, right? <laughs> Stand up, Bo. No, I'm just <laughs> At the end of the day, God says, but on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy, and Jacob will possess his inheritance. In other words, you can talk about me. <laughs> you can drive on by when you see me on the side of the road. I'm going to get mine. You can sit there and say nothing when they scandalize my name. But I'm going to be all right. I'm going to get mine, Reverend Davis. I'm, at the end of the day, what shall separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. No death, no hell, no angels, no things present, no things to come. Pastor Clark, I'm going to be all right. You knew I needed help. You did nothing. I'm good. You ain't got to bless me. He's blessing me every time I turn around. He's blessing me. You're going to be all right. So what they 
they treated you like that. So what they talk about you? So what they didn't give you no gas money? I declare and I declare that God will see about you. I'm going to be all right. It's a good day. Yeah, it's a good day. Yeah, because he loves me. He hung for me. He died for me. And he's coming back. I'm going to be all right. I feel you. I'm going to be all right. You need you. You know you should have came and prayed for me at least. But I'm going to be all right. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Yeah, you ain't got to talk about it. You ain't got to sit there and watch me go through. I'm going to be all right. If there's someone that's bigger than you and better than you, at the end of the day, I'm going to be all right. You saw his word. You didn't visit me when I was homeless, when I was in prison, or feed me when I was hungry, then clothe me, then buy me no Tommy gear, but I'm going to be all right. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Look, let me tell you, don't take it personal. They just don't know who you know. They don't know him like you know him. They don't love him like you love him. They don't glorify him like you glorify him. But I'm telling you, they that wait upon the Lord. They shall run but not grow weary. They shall walk but not faint. They shall mount up with wings and soar like the eagle. You're going to be all right. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. My God, my God, my God. Everybody standing. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I'm going to leave it alone. Come on, man. Those who watch this on today by way of internet, I want to encourage you. There will be your brother's keeper. We're going to continue to pray for you. We're going to continue to intercede for you. And if you will come and let us know how we could be a blessing to you, we'll do what we can. And it's going to be okay because God loves you. We want to invite you to surrender your life to Christ on today. If you don't know him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And the same thing for this sanctuary. If you don't know him, surrender your life to him on today. If you're looking for a church home, perhaps you already know him. And if you're looking for a church home, it's the ministers. Walk down the aisle. If you just take them by the hand, they'll escort you back up here. If you're in a backslidden state. If you just need prayer, just come just like you are. And we'll touch. And we'll agree with you. And we'll bleed with you. Sing quiet. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Let them talk about you, but it's going to be all right. They didn't come to see about you, Shirley, but it's going to be all right. Yeah. You were in need and you was in want, but it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Belita Clark, it's going to be all right, girl. Yeah. Yeah. They sat there, they did nothing, but it's going to be a good day. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Special prayer, looking for a church home, looking for salvation, just come.
just just come just like you are don't think about it don't think about it if you know you need to come just do it just come just come just don't put it off tomorrow may never come I've been to four funerals in the past week I hope I don't go to yours but just in case you may need to come so that when you wake up you wake up in glory just come just like you are just come just come don't counterplay don't procrastinate just come just come just come just come just like you are just like you are god bless you hallelujah hallelujah thank you god Young. Amen. Thank you, God. Whosoever will, whosoever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whosoever will, let them come. Whosoever. Whosoever. You have not because you ask not. You just come and just ask. We want the windows of heaven to open up for you. So he can pour out. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. That's still coming. God is still getting the glory. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. He's drawn them. You don't have to join. We'll still pray with you. If you're standing in the need of prayer, just come. There may be one in the choir that needs to come. I don't know. I don't know. Just like you are, don't try to get it together. Come just like you are. Mother Exum, Mother Exum. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. He'll take care of you. Yes, he will. Father, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you, God, for your visitation. We thank you, oh God, for your revelation. We thank you, oh God, for coming and sitting with us in the midst, God. And God, we pray now that the seed sown in the hearts of your people, that it will not only, God, take root, but it will grow. And they too will begin to bear more fruit for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We thank you for your glory, God. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you for delivering us, oh God. We thank you for being a friend that sticks closer than a brother, God. We thank you, oh God, for making us brother keepers in this house on today. We thank you, God, for the great things that you've done. And we give you glory and honor and majesty and glory and honor and majesty and glory and honor and majesty. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Amen, 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 amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. God bless you. If you're so desired, you might have your seat. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. Somebody ought to just tell him thank you. Somebody just ought to say thank you, God. For your glory, God. Oh, we thank you for your word, God. 
We thank you for your power Hallelujah. and your might. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It's really going to be all right. I don't know who you are, but it's really going to be all right. It really is. Just keep waiting on it. Am I right about it? Yeah, just keep waiting on him. <laughs> yeah, just keep waiting on him. He, he ain't mad at you. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. Taquana, where you at? Taquana Butts. Where you at, Taquana? Stand, Taquana, stand up. You got out of the hospital before I could get to you, girl. Give her a hand. Jess got out. God bless you. Taquana, God bless you. Amen. We're glad you're here. God bless you. Just a couple of days in the hospital. Thank God Thank for you being you here. So. Uh, Darius, where are you at? Darius Gregory? You here for baptism? Are you baptized? What? He, okay, we, we're going to talk about it. That's your son. Amen. 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 We have several that's going to be baptized on the fourth Sunday of this month. If you so desire to be baptized, let uh, Mary raise your hand. Let me or Mary know. You know, you you may have been saved for 20, 30, 40 years. I don't know. But if you need to be baptized, then let us know. And some of us were baptized, and then we got saved. You need to be baptized. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you need to be baptized. So it's okay. It's a humbling thing. And what you're saying to the world is I'm dying to me, and I'm coming up as a new creature. That's all. That's all. I don't know about you. I, I went down twice, if I said before, because the first time I was baptized at the age of 11, you know, as they say, you go down to Dry devil come up a wet <laughs> But uh, when God saved me uh, from 21 years ago, uh, I went back and I felt something. I felt something. It was like he clothed me, you know, and I was an adult. You know, I was, I was what, 30? Anyway, so I don't care how old you are, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Come on back. Get baptized. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. For those that uh, purpose in your heart to join New Bethel on today, be sure to be at our New Disciples class at, uh, next Sunday at 945 so that we can get you uh, acclimated with what uh, we uh, call for for the New Disciples classes and some other things uh, because we want to try to get all of you uh, the right hand of fellowship the fourth Sunday of this month right after baptism. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Worship leader. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bless his name. Wasn't that an awesome word on today? We got to be mindful about being our brother's keeper. Amen? Amen. I thank God for that word on today. We're going to move on into, um, into our service, and we're, we're going to continue through our worship, and we've come to a part that everybody can play in, and that is our giving. It's giving time. Anybody excited about that? Yes. God loves a cheerful giver. So we ask that you prepare your hearts and your mind for giving right now. We're going to turn you over into the hands of the ushers. And we ask that you all stand at this time.
you for your giving on today. We are now going to prepare 